Hi, people. Welcome to Tuesday afternoon, I believe. What day it is? At least it is here. Uh, and thank you for some of you returning from the morning sessions. This afternoon's session is a session on CCE custom functions. Crazy stuff there. Uh, my name is Mike. Mike Kreitzer. I am your instructor for this afternoon. I'm an instructor here at Sunset Learning mostly on the contact center enterprise side might see me wandering around doing some call manager unity express stuff as well occasionally here and there but predominantly working on contact center enterprise so hopefully we can help you out today with a uh, cool little subject here on custom functions so there you go uh, let's get started here if you got any questions along the way uh comments things to add please feel free to chime in pretty small group so whatever you want to do out there all right let's see if this is going to work for me here there we go so our agenda this afternoon probably take us i don't know 25 minutes or so to talk about custom functions what the heck they are uh how do you use them what are their purpose within the cce scripting environment and of course, we'll show you some examples. We'll start off kind of cheesy just to show you the basics of what a custom function is. And then we'll ultimately progress to show you how we use custom functions when including parameters along the way. And at the end of that, we'll say, hey, I don't know if you all have any cool examples you want to share or talk about. We can turn the screen over to you if you want to or not, kind of up to you. Uh, a couple of you that are new this afternoon joining us, stick around at the end. We'll uh, have a marketing promotion here. I'll tell you how to win a new car, maybe. Uh, maybe not really, but might give you some way to save some money on some classes at the end of this discussion. All right, custom functions, an overview of custom functions. What is a custom function? It's like regular function, only custom. Well, all right, well, what's that? What's, what's a function? Function generally uh, in the world of CC scripting, as we will show you, We've got some built-in functions. So if you, by example, want to come up with what time it is right now or what day it is or date uh, or combine some stuff together or split some stuff apart or look at the third and fourth character in a long string of information, there's a bunch of built-in functions that allow you to do that. We've got a date function and a time function and a mid and a left and a right and a... Um, all kinds of different built-in functions. So a custom function is maybe a combination of functions or formulas or things that you, for most people, I would say, most people, they use them for some kind of repetitive function. You've got some long formula somebody's come up with somewhere that you use often and often and often. Well, stop building that formula, create yourself a custom function. And it can be as simple as that. So we'll take a look at some examples, might save you some programming time, um key things we want to know about configuration wise we're going to see we configure custom functions in script editor in the script drop down menu selection item that's where we go to build construct our custom functions we use custom functions within the formula editor of script editor itself so if you're ever building a formula looking at something you've got you know variables tab you've got a functions tab and you got a custom functions tab We'll point out how to use those within script editor. Uh, custom function naming standard, kind of like ECC variables or user variables in ICM, same thing with custom functions. All custom functions start with a keyword user. That's simply so they're, I guess, sortable or in some list or to let you know that somebody built them. They didn't come standard with the system. There is uh, no built-in custom functions out of the box. There's built-in functions, but no custom functions out of the box. If you're a 12.6 customer of ICM, really context enterprise package or otherwise, uh, CCE, you must apply engineering special eight in order to be able to save your custom functions. We kind of realized that somewhere along the way that we get in there and you can bring up custom functions and you can look at them and build them, but when you go to hit save, then it just exits script editor ungracefully for you and relaunches it. So that's a little bit inconvenient. Uh, engineering special eight, pretty easy update. Only needs to be applied to your AWs, your client AWs, as well as your DAWs. 
Um, interesting enough on the client AWS, and that just solves your problem. So not a big deal there. All right, so custom functions. Let's look here at the configuration and usage just real quick. This slide really goes hand in hand with those bullet points there. So again, configuration wise, we're gonna find that in script editor, in ICM on one of your AWs, DAW or CAW, admin workstations under script, you've got this thing called custom functions. We're gonna poke around here in custom functions, show you how to add custom functions. Of course, you can modify them and delete them. Uh, import or export, uh, if you had previous systems or systems you came from, you could certainly do that for big long formulas and whatnot as opposed to rebuilding them. And we'll also talk about the use of the validate feature here in custom functions. So we're gonna build them and test them over here under the script menu and script editor. We're gonna use those custom functions within scripting somewhere in the formula editor. So you'll see, we'll make use of a couple of these custom functions we've got built along the way and exactly what they're uh, trying to tell you is going on there. May need engineering special eight. Again, that's for ICM 1261. And remember those engineering specials are obtained in a different URL location than your regular update or upgrade feature sets for software. So separate location for all of your engineering specials. Some cheesy examples of custom functions. They get a little less cheesy as we go, but start off pretty basic. Just want to show you what a custom function can be. When we add a new custom function under the script menu, here we're adding a new custom function. Notice we got to give it some kind of a name. The name must start off with, as we mentioned, user. So we've got a custom function named simple math here. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're just trying to do some simple math with what's going on in our function. Um, two plus three times four, keeping in mind the use of the brackets, bracketology over there. Uh, anybody got an answer for what my little simple math problem is should be equal to? I'll take all answers correct or not. You can type into the text window if you want to there, the chat window. I haven't seen anybody responding back to me. So we'll leave that question hanging. All right, what is our simple math problem? But a uh, key thing here is to show you that a custom function, you're probably not going to be using it for simple math like this. However, um, notice here we're filling in this thing called a function definition. So Here's where we're trying to fill in some repetitive formula that we may often be trying to create. And along the way, we're gonna have some discussions here about parameters. Right, what's a parameter? Well, usually it's kind of an ordered list of variables is how I would describe it. So I've got variables, things that can change, and a parameter is usually a, you gotta put this variable first and this variable second, and third and fourth and so on. So my fancy formula here has no parameters is what I'm simply pointing out in this particular case. Cool, let's progress onward. Notice when I create this custom function, simple formula, no parameters used in the simple test. One of the things I have an ability to do with my fancy custom function is do a test, right? And when I do a test here, it's really trying to help you determine as if your function is valid. Maybe not accurate as you'll see, or maybe actually you don't produce a real answer, um, but is it valid? Right? Do you have all your brackets in the right spots and whatnot? And we'll also show you along the way some use of some creative things you can do within here. So haven't actually put any value in for what my function is. Just doing a test, did an evaluate here, and it says your expression seems to be valid. Seems to be a good idea before maybe you introduce that into a script editor. Otherwise, you shall have some problems. Well, it's pretty basic, so hang in there. Let's progress forward. We'll get a little bit more creative as we go. Uh, most often, I guess, in my travels around the world and country, visiting um, customers out there and seeing their script editor and what they're using stuff for, a lot of people that use custom functions use them as effectively ways to put in formulas that are often used. Okay, uh, so here's some kind of a repetitive formula custom function that we're building. And notice again, no parameters in this specific uh, formula. This formula you might say is hard-coded with a bunch of things. We're trying to figure out, I don't know, average speed of answer and how many agents are available and whatnot. My cheesy formula here, right? 
trying to figure out the square root of the distance to the moon and back divided by how many agents are available and whatnot. And, you know, uh, so many miles or so. Obviously, this is not a real formula, um, but it adheres to all of the correct specifications in regards to brackets and uh, plus signs and dividing by and multiplying and whatnot. So the interesting part about this little test here is when I build this formula, which again could be a valid formula that I use often within scripting, instead of building it every time, create yourself a custom function. Notice when I do a test down here, it says, hey, your expression is valid. So I'm trying to point out here that just because your expression is valid, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Okay, and I can't actually divide by the square root of the distance to the moon and back in this particular case. So there's just a bunch of gibberish in that formula. But it does pass the specifications for what's going on there. So don't put all of your trust in that whole evaluate process. We'll show you some use of these functions coming up here shortly in scripting. One slide to me. Here's uh, one with a couple of parameters, just to introduce you to some cool parameter stuff initially. Uh, what's a parameter? Well, in this case, a pair of meters, I suppose, is what it is. So I've got a uh, function named two simple parameters. So I've got two parameters going on here. And what I'm trying to do is take one parameter, which I'm saying, oh, it's going to be a variable value. I don't know what the value is going to be. Let's just put a placeholder in there. So the way I put in a parameter in is via my percent uh, parameter number percent tags there, I guess is what I'd call that. There's probably some official programming term for that parameter specification. So I'm trying to take parameter one and add it with parameter two. So, you know, two plus two equals what? Well, I should come up with four is what I should param be able to plug in there. Um, and notice that simple expression just has some brackets around the left-hand side. So very simple function. Um, doing a test over here on the right-hand side with an evaluate. And again, maybe make notice here on the evaluate. Sorry, I'm going to go back here. The evaluate, notice when I do an evaluate, it throws in that percent one percent comma percent two percent bracket. And what that's going to indicate to you is it's hoping, this custom function is hoping you're going to be able to plug some kind of value into those two um, comma separated list objects. And that's what it's going to use to shove into this fancy formula here. Okay. So again, stand by. We'll show you some use of some of this simple stuff within script. Speaking of which, right here, we are going to do some scripting testing. Um, you know, if you're trying to build some custom function, you go, I don't know, how would I test that in reality? Well, I created a bogus dialed number and a bogus call type. So here I've got a dialed number created in the SPA again, contact center or package contact center enterprise. Got a dialed number string that's not a dialed number string, but a name, custom function DN. Uh, I've got routing type set to internal voice. That's only because call tracer has internal voice as your routing clients at the top of the list. So it kind of made that uh, convenient for myself. And I've got a call type created here. Got a dialed number, got a call type. Uh, that means I can map all that to a fancy script over here. So let me take a look at what I'm trying to do here in my simple script. Uh, first off, I'm going to take um, set peripheral variable one to be equal to a PQ that I've got created, right? PQ in this case is a precision Q. The name of the PQ that we had built for one of our classes is named the motor PQ. Uh, and it looks like what I'm trying to do is figure out if there's anybody available in this motor PQ, um, you know, two agents, five agents, zero agents, and I'm going to add two to it. Right? And so if I've got no agents available in this motor PQ, I'll at least add two to it. And I'm then going to shove that value into peripheral variable one. Why is that? Well, hold your horses there. Peripheral variable two is going to be the recipient of uh, another PQ. I've got motor zero two. And that's just the name of a different PQ. I'm trying to take a look at people who are available there, and I'm going to add three to that agent count. So I'm just trying to do some simple stuff with setting some stuff into PV1 and PV2 that might come from other places, uh, real time data wise within my contact center environment. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like I'm going to set peripheral variable three to be equal to my user simple math custom function. 
or that user simple math cost custom function took, I think, uh, two plus three and multiplied it by four. So we're trying to see what kind of value is going to come up over there. So I'm taking that custom function and shoving that in a peripheral variable three. Uh, peripheral variable four, I'm going to fill in this user two parameters with a couple of values. Um, you may or may not remember that that user two parameters was simply trying to take parameter one and add it with parameter two. So right here, I'm hard coding these two parameters that I'm going to shove into that custom function. Um, but then I'm going to get a little bit creative here with peripheral variable five. Peripheral variable five, I'm going to put the use two parameter, I'm sorry, the two parameters custom function again, except for now what I'm going to put in there instead is whatever's in peripheral variable one and peripheral variable, peripheral variable two. And peripheral variable one and two got populated from some kind of real-time data coming in this case from CCE. So we'll see actually uh, if it can pick that stuff up in there or not. Um, and then what we're gonna simply shove into perfect variable six is the value of that user repetitive formula. Remember that repetitive formula was just a bunch of gibberish that we had created along the way. So let's see what happens with that. So I've got a dial number, I've got a call type, I've got a simple script. All this stuff is of course scheduled and let's use call tracer just as a quick test to see what we've got going on so far. And then let's see if we can extrapolate some other cool ways to maybe make use of custom functions that are more real world than adding stuff up together. So just using call tracer, call tracer is, uh, you know, will lie to you given the opportunity, but pretty useful in this case. Using call tracer, I got my Cisco voice media routing domain. My routing client is call manager because I made that dial number an internal dial number. And lo and behold, there's that dial number that shows up and I can just do a send call here. Uh, and that dial number is mapped to call type, mapped to this fancy custom function script over here. Looks like I'm using uh, script version seven in this particular case. And looks like uh, what we've got set in variable, uh, in the set variable node, node number two, looks like we put into peripheral variable one, uh, the number of agents available in that motor PQ, and we added two to it. And it looks like over here, since that value is set to two, what can I assume from that? Mm, there was nobody actually available in that motor PQ at the time of this test call. Peripheral variable three, we put in a, I'm sorry, a set variable node number three, we shoved into peripheral variable two, the number of agents available in the motor O2 PQ, uh, and we added three to it, and notice what the value is set to is four. So I guess I can assume we had one person available in the motor O2 PQ, and we simply added three to that value. So we're left with value of two being shoved into preferable one, value of four in PV2. Cool, standby, we'll see what happens with that later. Uh, nobody answered my simple math question, but Two plus three, five times four is in fact 20. So we can see here that perfect variable three contains 20, which was the result of that simple math function. And again, I didn't have to think about what that formula was when I was opening up script editor. I just had to call that function. That function had all that stuff built in. So if that was a simple formula, awesome. Just repetitive motion there. Perfect variable four, uh, remember, was hard coded uh, to set the value in approval row four coming from our two parameters custom function, which we initially hard coded to a value of 49 and 22. And remember that two parameters uh, was simply trying to add up whatever the first parameter was with whatever the second parameter was. So 49 and 22 would, in fact, be, uh, for all intents and purposes, I guess, 71. So that seemed to work okay. But in reality, I'm never going to be hard coding, hopefully, values in the custom functions where applicable. I'd rather use some other value, maybe another peripheral variable, or as we'll show you here, another variable from a skill group or a PQ or whatnot. So here we've successfully put peripheral variable one in as one of our parameters. 
called a peripheral variable two, you would recognize that as just another formula that we've built there to seed, if you will, to use two parameters. And because PV1 and PV2 were set to those values, it again, uh, I'm sorry, because PV1 and PV2 were set to the values up top, two and four, it in fact came up with a value of six for that particular adventure down there. So again, kind of trying to prove to you that if you have a variable somewhere you care about, some number of agents available, you can maybe use that inside of a custom function to automatically and dynamically, probably more importantly, build you some answer of what you're trying to come up with. So um, you know, if I subtracted five from that lot, I'd be able to tell there's only one person available somewhere along the way. Notice that what we did here with peripheral variable six, we built a formula that was valid, um, but in reality, the result of that formula was not valid. So again, when you're doing the testing of building your functions, make sure that the formula you're actually building is going to come up with the correct result. Use something here like call tracer to see what happens with this whole process. All right, so now that we've got some, I guess, milestones set here with what we can maybe do, let's take a look at something that's maybe a little bit more practical for what you might do in the real world with custom functions. What I want to try to do is build some kind of a dynamic formula. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to figure out um, maybe using here some kind of an inline parameter. Uh, notice I've got one parameter for my simple test here. What I'm trying to do is figure out if, you know, agents are available in my PQ. All right, here's what I'm looking for. Is there any of agents available in some PQ? Well, which PQ? Ah, that's the piece that can vary. I got the motor 01 PQ. I got the motor 02 PQ. I've got this PQ, that PQ, or skill group, or call type, or whatever the heck you're looking for. I want that thing in the middle uh, to maybe have some kind of varying quality for what's going on. So uh, here's the formula that we're building. Looks like it's got one parameter, as we pointed out there, that percent one percent. Uh, I'm going to do a quick test over here. And now notice when I do a test, what I'm going to shove in the middle here is actually the value of the name of the PQ I want to look for. So, you know, can I put in there, if I somehow can put in Home zero two, that's the name of one of my cues. If I put that in that function, is that going to work? And it says, oh yeah, it should work, be okay. All right, so let's see if we can actually do that somewhere in our script. We do in fact have a PQ named home zero two, even though I just kind of hard coded that up top here. That's actually the name of a PQ that I've got somewhere uh, showing up in real time data in some script with agents logged in and available and ready. So can I you know, build some formula that would actually be able to make use of my agents that are available in that PQ or not, but do that dynamically? So here's one way that we made this happen. First off, we set peripheral variable seven to be equal to right, home zero two. So you might say we kind of hard coded home zero two into that set variable node. That's not very dynamic in the fact that I had to put home zero two in there. Now it's kind of cool that I didn't have to maybe rebuild the formula each and every time. Might've actually been a smaller part of a larger formula, but again, so far kind of hard coding that stuff. So not yet dynamic, but just a test. According to the real time data and the call tracer, this custom function worked so far. So I said, preferable seven be equal to uh, inline parameter. And I hard coded that inline parameter and notice what value it came up with was a value of one. And that value of one was begotten from right over here where we have, according to real-time data anyway, one agent actually available in that PQ. All right, so that's kind of getting closer to being a dynamic formula. Let's keep going. Um, this one slide here. This one slide, okay. Um, what I was not able to do, right? I can, if, if you put in basically one parameter that would, you'd fill in the whole name of the PQ and the PQ name and the variable, you can do that. What I was not able to do very successfully 
uh, not for lack of trying, and maybe not for lack of maybe some of your input out there, was I wasn't able to basically um, put this value of home zero two somehow dynamically along the way. Right, now let me show you what I'm trying to explain to myself here. So first off, I've got peripheral variable seven hard coded to home zero two. All right. Imagine somewhere we set a variable being set to the name of the PQ. This could be coming back, by example, from Call Studio. Call Studio, we heard a prompt that said for sales, press one, support, press two. Okay, if we press one, let's send a value back of sales. Press two, let's send a value back of support. Well, let's assume sales and support match the names of your PQs and or skill group somewhere. All right, that's cool. Um, so now what I want to do here is I want to set Peripheral variable eight is what I tried to set. Let me set peripheral variable eight to be equal to whatever is going to show up in user inline parameters. That's the name of my custom function. And instead of hard coding home zero two into there, I'm going to put in whatever was shown up in peripheral variable seven, which in theory is set to home zero two. Okay. Uh, now, problem is. Whenever I actually go to use this in a formula, what it's actually doing is literally trying to shove in call peripheral variable seven into the name of my formula. You notice my formula looks good so far. It's got the PQ on the left-hand side. It's got the variable on the right-hand side of available, but instead of putting in basically the contents of variable seven in there, it literally put that whole string in there, call that peripheral variable seven. And when you say you want to ignore this error, of course, uh, that's not going to work very well. So pretty close to being able to make this custom function work. Somehow I need a way to tell uh, the system right over here, hey, don't treat this as an actual name. Treat this as some kind of a variable name. So I tried a couple of things like the dollar sign, uh, a couple of other things out there. Um, wasn't able to make that happen. Sent this off to my coworkers, Mark and Bruce, before I left for vacation last week. And uh, I didn't hear anything come back from them either. So I'm going to throw it out there to you all in the real world and say, hey, do you got a solution for this over there? I'm waiting. If somebody has a cool solution, I'll be all about hearing about it. Now, if you don't, that's cool. Remember, basically, if I back up one page here, if you were to not necessarily hard code this all, um, but you know, have this formula, sorry, this formula was defined uh, as the whole string, you can most definitely use this as parameters to build out your, your formula. The problem I ran into was when I was just trying to get the middle piece of some formula built. Uh, that's where I seem didn't like it so much. And um, I've you know tried to look online in Cisco programming forums and um, developers location and online content. Can't find too much that's useful out there. There's got to be an easy solution, or it may not just be able to be done. According to Mr. David Macias, who was a long time ago student, probably 20 years ago at this point in time, um, he didn't, uh, at least as his last post, didn't seem to think that was maybe something you could do. He said he'd tried it for a long time, and maybe it was something that might have been able to be done in 12 6. So I don't know. As it stands right now, wasn't able to make that thing even be yet a one step cooler, but uh, hopefully we did show you. Um, I'm not sure where that slide came from, but I think that's an extra slide. Um, trying to show you a little bit about some custom functions. So remember, at a basic level, I would say, go back and look at your live system, see if there are some custom functions built. Um, if you're afraid of custom function, don't be. If your custom function has zero parameters, typically it's nothing more than a very long formula that somebody doesn't want to have to go through and rebuild each and every time. Right? Instead of calling that big long formula, just call that custom function. Uh, if your custom function does in fact have one or more parameters, well, take a look at that. And there's somewhere you ought to be able to see a percent one, percent, percent two percent, 
so on and so forth. I think up to 20 or so. I'm not sure what that count is. Um, parameters that you can put in there. And basically what that is is somebody elegantly trying to fill stuff in that could be dynamic in nature. So custom functions are pretty cool and hopefully can be useful to you in the real world. Uh, some of you that weren't here this morning, we just want to remind you that we've got some CCE classes, all these classes that we've got built on packaged contacts enterprise. Uh, we can also do unified contacts enterprise, a little flick of the switch and we turn into UCCE. So if you've got UCCE not packaged, you need some custom curriculum training learning, let us know, we can help you out. Other than that, what we've got kind of canned off the shelf a foundations and an admin course. Those two courses make up five days of training. They usually go together. Foundations, if you just need to know the big picture of CCE, if you've got some executive or senior management that needs to know something about what you work on, send them to that one-day course. Uh, four days for the regular admin. Focus there is really moves, ads, and changes. Advanced admin, three days. I'd say the goal there is really data manipulation. All that stuff we've been talking about in this discussion regarding custom functions and functions and being able to send stuff back and forth between ICM and CVP call studio, by example, and all the way back to finesse. Now to break all that stuff up, that's one of the key uh, and thing, things that we talk about in the advanced admin course, right? Is data manipulation within scripting and making things look cool. Two-day reporting course, that's on CUIC, of course. Uh, those make up usually a five-day work week. For us, those two courses are usually combined together. And another two courses that are usually combined together, implementation of troubleshooting. I think implementation of troubleshooting running as early as next week. Uh, don't let implementation scare you. If your system's already implemented, don't say, ah, I probably shouldn't take that. That's a great course if you want to know the nuts and bolts of how things go together. Uh, we will be building an additional site on top of the deployment that you might actually have use for in the real world. And uh, we talk about all kinds of cool things like security certificates and maddening other things that will drive you crazy if you don't know what you're doing. So uh, think seriously about that implementation course, even though maybe the name frightens you a little bit. Troubleshooting course, good two-day troubleshooting course, much better if you've attended the first three days of implementation. You get a lot more mileage out of that, I'm pretty convinced. You got enterprise chat and email, that's a four-day adventure. All the stuff is now upgraded to 12.6, really. I think ECE, we're still on 12.5. 12.6, I think, requires a new version of Windows, but um, that's the only thing. Everything else is 12.6 in our lab environment. Uh, and we've got other versions as well. So if you're still on version 11, or I don't know if we still have any images on 10, but you know, 11 looks pretty similar to that. I got nothing else for you. I appreciate your time today with custom functions. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two, perhaps, maybe not. I don't know if that was useful to or not. Uh, however, uh, one thing I would ask you to share with your salespeople out there is if you've got other topics you'd like to see us doing in these sessions, you know, let us know. This topic here was born out of somebody that wrote in that said, hey, we'd like something on custom functions. And we said, hey, that seems like a pretty good topic. So uh, there you go. Sean says, nice overview. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Sunil says, CUIC custom reporting. All right. That seems like a pretty good one. We do in that two-day course I delve into custom reporting and we distinguish what I think we call report personalization from truly report customization. But uh, well, well noted there, Sunil, we can certainly do some CUIC custom reporting. I'll we'll write that down. Uh, thanks, and let us know if we can help you out with your training needs, contact center, security, whatever. Right? We do all kinds of stuff. I don't personally, but we do as a company. So there you go.